Hello and welcome back to this next chapter of my DS10019 Plus Perfect Setup. Now, I've talked about media, I've talked about localised backups, and I've talked about settings and user groups and RAID. But, one thing I haven't touched on is a particularly growing area of NAS drives, and definitely something that people have been buying, Synology, or indeed QNAP NAS is for, for the last few years. Namely, surveillance. Synology supplies you with Surveillance Station 8.2 currently, with a newer version incoming. And it is a great, very, very detailed and, you know, interesting surveillance platform. So, what I thought I'd do is, for those of you that are wondering about the versatility of surveillance on your NAS, what are the right cameras to go for, and what are the, you know, the highs, the lows, the limitations, and the unlimited potential of a surveillance NAS using the 10019 as an MVR, Network Video Recorder, I thought I'd make this video and talk you through the highs and the lows and how to set it up. So, let's go. Right, so we're back on the DS1019 Plus user interface with DSM 6.2, and today we're talking about surveillance, of course. Now, for those that aren't aware, if this is your first Synology NAS, the first thing you need to do is head to the Package Center and download an application called Surveillance Station. Um, once you go into there, I'll fast forward from it, because we'll try and keep this as brief as possible for you guys, you need to install this app. It's completely for free. It's quite a slow installation. There's no denying it, but that's because it's quite multi-tiered with a lot going on. You click Surveillance Station and it will now open into this brand new user interface. As you can see from the tabs at the top, we have a completely separate one for the NAS structure and one down here for Surveillance Station. Now you will have to ensure that you have IP cameras on your local area network or internet cameras that can have a, um, a static IP that can be assigned to the Synology NAS on this software to take advantage of it. Adding cameras is painfully easy on the DS1019 uh, Plus. First thing you need to do is go to the IP camera settings and it will then it will give you the option to search your local area network for a camera. Now I've got a real link camera here and I'm going to be using Synology's live camera software that turns your mobile phone into an IP camera for your now. Something for people that with an old phone knocking around in a drawer might really take care of and make, to make the most of. So go to either quick setup or complete setup. If you go for complete setup, you can do a really thorough breakdown of what this camera is going to do and how much it uses. So why don't we go for complete setup to make sure you get the full guide here. Click next and then search your local area, area network for the camera. Now Synology's supported camera list isn't as extensive as it could be and I know of many many cameras that are supported by Synology NAS but aren't on their list so I recommend you head over to ONVIF and it will find this camera, in my case the Rio Link. Now I've found the camera, I've got to put login, which for this camera is just the word admin and blank, and then click test. Right now I'm waving at the camera like crazy and there I am. So we'll add this camera to our surveillance setup. Now from here we can adjust the settings which of course will differ depending on the camera you choose to use. This is a fairly good camera, I've used it in a numerous surveillance NAS videos, and I'm going to leave all these settings as default, but they let you tinker with the camera's layout, as well as choose where it's going to save to, and the maximum limit that it will save data for, or the number of days, recycling over the oldest um, files one by one. So again, we'll leave that um, to 10 gig, but we'll say that it'll delete files after 30 days. We'll click next. From here we can now say when during the day do we want the camera to be on. So say for example when we are in the office we don't want to use it but more out of the office we do. So for now let's say it's a standard 9 to 5 operation and we want to say that we want the, the camera to be off during this period. So we want motion detection from right there till 5. So it will be on, but motion detection will be activated during that period. And again, you can remove usage of some cameras at certain times of day. And this will remove the camera being used at all in that period. We carry on, and that means we've now got motion detection enabled during those hours. And the system will alert those and keep timestamps 
if motion detection is noticed on that camera. Now again, we've got pan tilt zoom control, which means we can change the you know, operation of this camera, but this is very camera specific if we want to control that camera. If you want, I'll do a quick demo of the pan tilt zoom. And you can set a patrol pattern as well as its preset position if you want to change where it looks to start with. And again, lots of different things there. You can change the sensitivity of the pan tilt zoom and more. Now, we will add another camera in a bit, but the next thing we want to do is go to the live view. Now, live view is a control deck system where it will show that camera on screen. Don't worry about the sound sync being out of whack. But say we want to add another camera. So for now, why don't we add a second camera using the live view settings? This is going to be a mobile phone using the live view app. And it will be just in front of the camera here and it will add this. Oh no, we still have to put the password. There we go. We're using the app there. Enter the password. We're going to pair that app. We'll leave that there. It's probably reversed on screen for you there. And again, this is a neat little trick for turning your spare phones or phones in a drawer into a camera. So there's our setup. There's all the stuff there. There's the camera that you're looking through there. Maybe I should turn it up that way because that's the way I've reset the camera to start with. And there is our setup. So again, I'm going to leave that camera there and that will film me as we talk. Now, again, we've got this here and we can control the pan tilt zoom on this camera if we so choose. So say we want to see what's behind me, the camera will move accordingly. Or if we like, we can zoom in as we so choose. We'll zoom in on Robbie's eye. Let's have a look, do that properly. And we can hear there the camera zooming in with its optical zoom enabled. Again, you can take snapshots if you so choose. So take a snapshot. And of course you can do separate side videos as well as enabling audio in and out on cameras. But of course a lot of this will depend on the cameras you use. And of course the alert panels will then let us know when certain things that we've triggered for, for light, motion, heat detection, again, depending on the camera, you can activate. And of course the patrol pattern will let you control the camera covering a certain space over a period of time. Now, if we move away from that, we can go into the timeline and in the timeline settings, we can then look at all the recordings that have happened so far and sequence between them. So there's that video from earlier on the right hand side. And if we go back a little further back, there's not too much recorded on the other camera. We can see things that we've recorded previously. In the application center, we can install other apps to integrate the device with ex existing surveillance systems. And that means that if, particularly if you're a small business, you really will be able to tailor this NAS to your in-house security. It does take a little bit of time to upload there, but if we go to all the applications, there are shed loads. And I know I've done quite a few videos on surveillance, but none specific to the 1019 plus. Things like live broadcast mean where you can stream directly to YouTube for other users and it's much easier to share the video footage from a camera for launch events and more. And of course, there are client applications for your desktop PC as well as integration with security things like security doors, windows, shutters and alarms that you can enable and add to the surveillance platform. And that's about it really. We're gonna wrap things up there. Thank you so much for watching. There are so many ways in which you can take advantage of security with this NAS, the DS1019 Plus. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.